this video, you're going to start learning about time bases, starting with samples and sample based tracks. When you're working in Pro Tools, you have the option of setting the time base for each of your tracks to either samples or ticks. You've probably noticed that when you create new tracks, if they're audio tracks, they have a default time base of samples, but you can change that to ticks if you like. MIDI and instrument tracks default to using a ticks time base, but they can be changed to be sample based. Also, at any time after you've created them, Pro Tools lets you change the time base of any of your tracks from samples to ticks or from ticks to samples. And so it's these time bases that we're going to be learning about. Now, the key to understanding time bases is to consider the way Pro Tools captures and stores digital audio versus the way it captures and stores MIDI information. So we'll start by looking at digital audio and samples. Digital audio is recorded and stored as a series of individual samples. Similar to the way film or video is made up of individual frames, but where film and video will take only 30 frames per second to make a movie, digital audio devices will take between 44,100 and 192,000 samples of your incoming audio each second. The number of samples per second is determined by the sample rate setting. Okay, so in this illustration, the curvy blue line represents one second of your incoming audio signal. When you record this audio digitally, a series of individual samples of the audio are being taken. And then after it's recorded, that series of samples is used to digitally recreate your audio signal. That's what you're working with and listening to when you're working in Pro Tools. Now, no matter when or where you originally recorded the audio samples, if you recorded them directly into Pro Tools or imported them from somewhere else into Pro Tools, your Pro Tools sessions always start counting the series of samples at the very start of the session. You can see this sample count by looking at the samples timeline using the samples ruler. Since Pro Tools starts counting each sample from the beginning of the session, it means that each sample has its own absolute fixed position in the timeline. So the key to understanding sample-based tracks is to recognize audio or MIDI data on sample-based tracks is always located at a particular sample location in the timeline. If you change the tempo of the session, after the audio is placed in the timeline, the audio will not move because the sample locations do not change. They're always fixed to a location that is based on the number of samples that have elapsed from the start of the session. Okay, so that's the first half of this explanation. And the thing you need to remember from this lesson is that audio regions or MIDI events on sample-based tracks are always located at a particular sample location in the timeline and that that sample location does not change with the tempo. Now in the next video you'll learn about the ticks time base and then after that we'll put it all together and see some practical examples of how time base influences how you work in Pro Tools. So for now thanks for watching and I will see you at the next lesson.